All right, everybody, welcome back to another Shots from the Winchester podcast presented by Greencastle. And today I have a really special guest. I have Mark from Skeleton Crew Adventures. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that neither him or I are in the Winchester, but he has a very cool background. He's uh, on a boat right now, so we're going to learn a little bit more about why. So, Mark, thank you for joining us. Glad to have you. Thanks, Lindsay. I appreciate y'all having me here. Cool. Great. So, um, let's just like get right into it because I think this, the stuff that you do is like really fascinating and interesting. So tell us a little bit about what Skeleton Crew Adventures is. Uh, so Skeleton Crew Adventures is a nonprofit based out of Houston, Texas. Uh, what we do is we provide adventure therapy to veterans and first responders through sailing. So it's like dealing with challenges of coming home from overseas. There's a lot of anger, depression, anxiety, and all this. This adventure therapy, you can actually get them out on the boat and help them be able to deal with that stuff a bit better. That's really cool. I think that's really fascinating, and I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Uh, uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. So how did Skeleton Crew Adventures start? It started back in 2016 with Taylor Greger. Um, when he got out of the Navy, he was having, he was having some challenges as well. Um, a bunch of his buddies were killing himself. And he was trying to figure out how to help stop that. He was seeing all sorts of veteran suicides everywhere. Um, she came up with the idea to sail around Cape Horn and make a documentary about it showing how sailing is good. Um, he set out on a two-year journey, made a documentary about it. He got a pretty large following, so he got a bunch more veterans involved with him. So by getting the veterans involved, now it gives him more of a purpose, something to look forward to. And then that's going to be a less likely statistic. They're not going to decide to you know, turn themselves off, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, after he got done with that journey, he wanted he was trying to figure out how to uh, continue it. And he knew he couldn't just spend you know, the rest of his life sailing on a boat, or maybe he could. Um, so he started the nonprofit. Um, and then it's local to Houston. So now we'll take veterans out for day sales, overnight sales, and then once, you know, they get more experience and they learn we'll take them on an also passage um, and that's kind of where we're at now we just came back from a two-week passage from the british virgin islands we brought godspeed this is the boat i'm sitting on our 51 foot swan we brought that back a total of 2,000 miles so basically it's, it's it all started with taylor i mean the guy's guy's driven he's got a purpose it's amazing that's that's really really great i love that story so how did you then find Skeleton Crew? Because you're you're a veteran, right? So, so how did you find them? Um, he had linked up with another guy I knew. They got me to fly down from Washington State to come sail with them once. Um, I was, I guess I still had the whole idea of sailing that it's not for me. It's for, you know, old, rich, retired people that have nothing but money and time on hand. So <laughs> I was proved wrong, obviously. Um, yeah, so I flew down February of 2021. We sailed for a weekend from Houston to Galveston, stayed the night and sailed back. And it just, it hit me. I had, I wasn't angry or depressed. There was no anxiety. I was like calm and I felt happy for once. Like my whole body was relaxed and it just hit me in the cockpit. And I was looking around. I'm like, all right, well, this is where I need to be. So I ended up... <laughs> They thought I was a bit crazy, but I looked at them and said, all right, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and sell everything and move down here and help y'all. They, I got the normal reaction, like, okay, you know, you know, believe it when I see it. Uh, well, sure as shit, May of 21, I showed up with my first load at Taylor's house. I'm like, hey, bro, here's the car trailer. Uh, I got to fly back to Washington State, grab the rest of my stuff, and drive back down. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... I literally just uprooted everything left and came down to help ever since. That's all I've been trying to do, help these guys out. And now we've built something pretty large. It's awesome. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I love it. Um, so then explain adventure therapy. For those, there's probably a lot of people out there who have no idea what adventure therapy is. And there's a lot of mm. different therapies for veterans and first responders. But tell us specifically about this adventure therapy and what that means. So adventure therapy is not just sitting in an office talking to somebody. This is actually getting you out in the real world, uh, getting you back in a team environment, and putting yourself in more of a situation to get 
either a slight adrenaline rush or a larger adrenaline rush. And basically, you start doing that since, like, there's a whole scientific reason behind the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus and how it shrinks. You know, say you stay in combat forever, it shrinks, you stay in that fight or flight mode because that's what you need to survive. Well, your body doesn't know how to regrow that or how to deal and cope with that afterwards. So by doing this, once you start getting on that adrenaline rush, it'll almost mimic what you had in combat, but in a good way. So now you're going to be on an adrenaline rush with a group of veterans, and you're going to start replacing the bad memories with good memories. And since the brain's just an amazing thing, like I'm not a doctor or scientist, but it helps regrow it. I, I don't know the exact science behind it, but I know it works. I know it helps regrow your hippocampus. So that way it brings you out of that fight or flight mode to where if something happens, you can look at it and deal with it logically instead of immediately you're going to fight or you got to get away. So that's basically the long and short of it. Yeah, and you must be a proponent of that, too. So you can speak to it even though you're not a doctor because you've lived it, right? So you understand mm-hmm. that it works and why it works. So that's really amazing. I hope that people listening will try to get involved. I mean, I really think it's such a cool thing. Um so how long have you been sailing for then? So you, you, you just kind of one day were like, I'm going to do this. Like, how long has it been now that you've been sailing? <laughs> the first time I sailed, first time I stepped foot on a sailboat was February of 2021 when I flew down here. And then again in May, and I've been sailing ever since, so about two years, give or take. Okay. And so what was that first experience like versus what it feels like now? Um, the first one, I was totally unsure what to expect. I was like, you know, it's a sailboat. I've, I've already got my mind made up on what it is. But I was like, hey, there's some these cool people go hang out. It was a big eye opener on what it was. So I was like, wait, you have to manually do everything? I'm like, huh, this is interesting. And then as it's progressed and I've gotten some more training with sailing life with all this stuff, it's natural. It's just one of those things that fits and still feels exactly like it's where I need to be. That's really neat. I mean, I can't pretend to know anything about boats or sailing. I, I was in the army. I'm in the army. Um, we don't do a lot of sailing in the army or anything with boats, so um, I think it's really fascinating. Um, did you have any like seasickness at first? I know that's the thing when people start getting on boats. Did you have any of that, or were you like totally good to go? So on Galveston Bay, it's pretty calm, so I never got sick. Um, after sailing around for a couple months on there i was like oh yeah i'm good i know what to do i know what to expect first time we went out in the gulf of mexico we got hit with this squall and absolutely i got sick i went off this corner i went off that corner i emptied my stomach a couple of times and i went down below i'm like sorry y'all you got this i'm, I'm going to sleep <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> and definitely that was a steep learning curve on how to deal with and how to overcome it you kind of still get queasy once in a while but it's it's nowhere near as bad and i just don't get sick anymore or as much, I should say. I say that now, I'm, I'm going to go get sick tomorrow. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So then tell us about the Ocean Globe race. So this is something that you pulled a team together for. So talk about the team, talk about what the race is, and then we'll get into some other questions about it as well. Uh, absolutely. Okay, so our team is all veterans. Um, we pulled from every branch except for Air Force so far. We've got Army, Navy, I was in the Marines, a couple of the Marines. Um, and we're doing it to film a documentary so we can show how sailing works as adventure therapy. And we're going to use this to help lobby for implementation of adventure therapy into the military after they come home from deployment as well. This all came about with Taylor. Again, it was he saw this race and he's like, man, I want to do this race. And they'll do it once every four years. So the Ocean Globe race is a retro race. Uh, retro meaning no modern day electronics. It's all celestial navigation. So you're navigating by the stars. Um, no cell phones, no iPads. If you want to listen to music, it has to be a cassette tape. <laughs> so like old school, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. <laughs> yeah, it's a 27,000 nautical mile race around the world. So it starts in Southampton, UK goes to Cape Town, South Africa, on to Auckland, New Zealand, Punta del Este, Uruguay, and then back to Southampton. Um, we are the only American boat in there, uh, only crew of all veterans, and plus we're filming a documentary. 
that's that's extremely unique. I, I actually didn't even know that. And you know, we've been talking. I didn't know that it was the only mm -hmm. uh, team from USA. I think that's really cool. So how did you how did you recruit the team for it then? How did you get the people together? Uh, it's basically all been word of mouth. We've done some advertising. We'll reach out to other nonprofits or veteran agencies and just basically go on that route. It's a smaller pool to get uh, to pick from since we are all vets and there are certain requirements for race, like for the female or under 24. Uh, only 30% can be professional captains. So it makes it a little tougher to find crew, but so far we have a really solid crew and just amazing people. Okay, so my next question then is, I'm assuming you have enough people to rotate. You're not all in the boat at one time. Is that how it works? Or explain that part. Correct. So since it's broken into four legs, we will have roughly eight to ten people per leg, depending on which leg it is. And then as we hit ports, there are going to be certain crew members that rotate in and out. You mentioned the boat in the beginning. So your boat, the name of the boat is, you said Godspeed? Godspeed. Okay, and why yeah. why that name? It's what it was named before, but we all found it fitting, and we have no want or desire to change it because you, know, you tell someone Godspeed, it's like, hey, good luck, Godspeed. You know, yeah. wish you well on your travels. And we're going around the world, so it's like, hey, we'll, we'll take all the luck and uh, stuff we can get. <laughs> um, so tell us about about the boat. So. Again, I don't know a whole lot about sailing or boats. Just tell us like some of the features or how big it is. Or it, It's a swan, and swans are actually made for uh, offshore racing. Um, it's heavy. It's stout. It's 51 feet long, 14 and a half feet wide. I mean, it weighs 22 tons, so you can tell it's not going to get affected as much by like your little squalls and whatnot. I mean, you're still going to get beat up in the big ones, but no worries. It's if you think of it, think of it like a floating condo. You've got two bathrooms. You've got the galley. There's the salon, the dining room, if you will. There's cabins. We have enough bunks for eight, nine people. So you can comfortably live on it. And since we'll be out at sea for 45, 50 days at a time, give or take, it's fully self-sustained. We're going to be adding solar and a water maker so we can take the uh, ocean water and clean it up. I don't know if it's like reverse osmosis or how we're going yet. But it makes it potable. So now you have drinking, cooking, uh, shower water, stuff like that. And yeah, it's just a floating condo. It's going to go about nine to 10 knots speed, which is probably 10 or 11 miles an hour all the way around the world. <laughs> and how long is that going to take? The whole race is slated to take seven months. <laughs> and that's straight, right? There, you're not. I mean, you go to like ports and stuff like that, but are you are mm -hmm. you breaking it all in between aside from just like picking up the next people on your head and out or how does that work? Roughly, it's going to be about two weeks in each port. So okay. two weeks in South Africa, New Zealand, Uruguay, and then we have the start and finish. That's actually kind of nice then. You're, you're getting a little travel in too, right? That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. So, yeah. So have you done a race like this before or had anybody on your current crew done a race like this at all before nobody's ever done a race like this uh taylor has sailed around uh south america and cape horn um we have crew members that have done atlantic crossings sailed around the gulf a bunch and galveston bay but this you know <laughs> this this is the mount everest for sailors especially <laughs> going around cape horn <laughs> i guess i should have asked and i don't i don't i don't know if this is i don't think this is why you'd be doing this anyway but is there some kind of like prize for winning or is there a winner or is it just you're doing you're going around and then you make it and hey good job you did it there is a prize uh, you get your entry feedback <laughs> but you also get the bragging rights of hey you know we raced around the world and we won <laughs> yeah which i don't think many people so can say honestly <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, our goal is just to make it through and make it through safely uh, yeah. we're not racers there's there's a whole difference between like a cruising sailor and a racing sailor the racer is like concerned about weight distribution, making sure you're always on the high side, making sure your boat's set up correctly, perfectly balanced, making sure you're constantly trimming sails. We're more like, hey, look, we're going to do this correctly. We're not going to you know, be moving every two seconds. <laughs> we're going to make sure the sails are good. We're going to have everything set down below and we're going to go and enjoy it, but we're going to try to go fast. But there's still that competitive nature of being a veteran. 
but knowing the people we're up against, I'm more like, let's just go enjoy it. And I think everybody else is on board too. Yeah. No, that's a good attitude to have. And hey, if you know, if if you do well, then that's the bonus, right? So what's the difference then, aside from the obvious of you're navigating using the the stars, um, but what's the difference between like a regular boat race and then this kind of boat race? Like have you done a regular one? If so, you know, what are the differences outside of that navigation part? Um, the races I've done here have been the smaller ones, but you can use autopilot, you have GPS navigation, and if it's a lot less physically involved, you're not constantly at the helm holding the wheel, um, it's, it's a bit more relaxed and a lot more automated, I guess. And that's the biggest thing is the technology, but also where we're going, you're, uh, you know, when once, let me say, once we hit the Southern Ocean for the second and third leg, um, uh, Basically, like, I've been trying to do as much research as I can. I'm like, all right, it's going to be interesting. Average wave is going to be like 20, 30 feet from what I found, 30, 40 knots to wind every day. Um, whereas out in the Gulf of Mexico, you can get 10 to 15 foot waves and 20, 25 foot, uh, or uh, sorry, not winds. So it's going to be way more intense and everything's going to be bigger down there. So it's going to be a lot more rocking back and forth, paying attention, making sure everybody's set, making sure there's better communication. Um, it's a lot more safety conscious down there. Yeah. And then it's the added piece of you're doing a documentary as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And you got to look good on camera. <laughs> right. <laughs> no getting seasick I'm or going whatever. To... <laughs> oh, it's going to be funny. I'm going to look like a Q-tip by the time we're done because I'm not going to cut my hair. I'm actually going to grow it out to it there. So it's just going to be this big fro. <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna look like tom hanks from castaway <laughs> <laughs> that's really i i can't even imagine i mean but at the same time some of that's really similar to some of the stuff that we've encountered in the military right like where you, you don't always get those moments of self-care and and showering and then those <laughs> luxuries and you're just kind of like okay this is what i'm gonna look like <laughs> right <laughs> that's exactly how it goes <laughs> <laughs> so then what is a day in the life going to be like during this race like do you have like a is there going to be like a battle rhythm yeah we'll have a watch schedule um basically we have two crews port and starboard it's going to be broken up to eight hour shifts and three four people on each shift and then in that it's also broken down again between time at the helm, time trimming sails, if you're down below on standby or whatever. So basically you're eight hours on, eight hours off. And then in your off time, you're gonna sleep, uh, eat, maybe make some more food for other crew members, take care of all the personal stuff. And basically that's it. Eight hours on, eight off for 45 days at a time. Wow, 45 days at a time, okay. It's like the ultimate fire guard. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just take the seven months of fire watch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so then what what do you think is going to be the hardest part about this race? That's, that's a tough one. It's, as long as we have good communication with the crew and we keep them all set up correctly, um, I think it's going to be the seas and making sure we don't break anything. Um, we're still learning. We have some absolute amazing people that are here to mentor us as well. So we're going to learn a lot more that way, but I'd say, yeah, the seas and communication with the crew because you get vets cramped up together too long. If they start getting irritable, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you mentioned, I think training. So you're, you're kind of doing training right now for it. What does your training look like? Are you just doing dry runs? Are you like practicing scenarios if something breaks or or how does that look? Uh, Pretty much we're going to run through all the above. Um, We're going to focus on man overboard drills, sailing the boat, making sure everybody gets a really good feel for the boat. And so it just becomes like second nature to them. But then there's also the mental part. People that have done this before, um, we're actually lucky enough to get their advice. Like, hey, this is what you need to look out for. Watch this. This is probably going to help you or you should definitely do this. Um, So it's going to cover basically everything from the mentality, making sure you got stuff good back home, what to expect. But then also the physical aspect on the boat to where you need to go to the gym. You need to stay in shape. You've got to work out. You've got to take care of yourself because this is going to be very, very strenuous. Yeah. So how do you stay in shape then while you're 
out there? <laughs> like, is there, is there other like boat workouts? Or is there something that like, you know, is like very specific to the space that you have? Yes and no. All right. So running the boat by itself is a workout. Um, it's a great workout, you know, moving sails around at the helm and all that. But we also have fans, the resistance fans we're going to set up. So you can also do some workouts and just kind of like maintain while you're out. You're not trying to get yoked or jacked. Or, you know, I'm not going to gain 10 pounds of muscle, but I'm going to stay good, well enough in shape to handle all this stuff. Still. So then what we talked about, what the hardest part is going to be. What do you what are you most excited about? What do you think the best part's going to be? And like the most rewarding part? Most rewarding part's going to be finishing the race. Just mm-hmm. being able to say we completed it safely. We went through it. We got together as a team. So I'm really looking forward to that teamwork, camaraderie and finishing race but also the travel i want to see a bunch of other countries i've never been to how can somebody one learn more about skeleton crew but also how can they get involved uh easy go to our website skeletoncrewadventures.org you can hit the contact button it'll shoot an email right to us it's been busy but usually i can get back the emails within a day at the latest um, and yeah, we can go from there. We can set up a plan. If people want to help, we always need help funding. That's the biggest thing because we are a nonprofit and we're fundraising for everything. We definitely need more help in that area. Um, you can donate through the website there, or if it's a larger donation, I've been getting contact and we can also do like wire transfers to save the insanely high fees of stuff. And I, I, I didn't even think about that, really. Like, you know, it's not just operating and maintaining the boat that you have costs around, but it's mm-hmm. everything else. I mean, you're going into ports. You're you, like, are you, you doing money out of pocket to, like, pay for somewhere to stay? Or are you all staying on the boat? Are you like, how does that work? That's what we're working on. Um, if we get them, if we can raise enough money, yeah, we're going to have a, a house in every port, a crew house. Um, if not, we'll probably crash on the boat. If you're listening and you want to donate, make sure you go to the website and, and kick some funds their way. They're a group of veterans, so uh, really appreciated. So where can people follow your journey, right? Like you're I'm going to assume that you, are you going to be able to post some updates when you at least get into port? Um, you know, are there social media accounts people can follow or YouTube? Where Where are you? Yep. So we are on Instagram and Facebook under Skeleton Crew Sailing. Um, we we will not be able to post while we're out, but at each port, uh, we're going to do like a media dump. The Ocean Globe Race is going to have media pushed out on there. So the OceanGlobeRace.com, Skeleton Crew, or Skeleton Crew Sailing on the social media, that's where we're going to have our guys start keeping everything pushed out. So you'll be able to follow us. Um, I'm waiting to see the exact website for tracking because there will be, there should be a way to follow us around the world as well. It'll pull up like a, yb races app or maybe on the website and you'll see a dot and it says godspeed that's us hopefully we're not in last place but you never know <laughs> fingers crossed i don't think you will be though um so then i, I wanted to let everybody know we're going to be doing a recap with you after the race so when you're done you'll come back on the podcast mm-hmm. you'll let us know all the great stuff that happened hopefully we still bring a win that would be really cool um but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to kind of do that recap and hear how it went. And and just to reiterate again, when does this start and when does it end? So the race actually starts September 10th of this year and it ends mid-April of 2024. Awesome stuff. So Mark, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, to everybody out there, please give them a follow, Skeleton Crew Adventures and also the Ocean Globe Race so you can keep track of where they are and what they're doing. And then also give shots from the Winchester and Greencastle a follow. We appreciate all the follows, likes, and comments. Um, it really means a lot. It gets our word out there. Uh, Mark, do you have anything to leave the audience with before we wrap it up? If you're stuck in your own head and you're a veteran, get out and do something because there's a lot of people they get stuck inside and they, they kind of like squander themselves away into a cave but you got to get out text a friend get out and do something it'll help you out great advice thank you so much mark really appreciate it and uh we'll talk to you soon all right thanks a lot Lindsay. i appreciate it thank you